On day one, I spawned into the Sika Woods as an adorable little fire rabbit. I may just be a wascally wabbit, but if you mess with me, that doesn't mean you won't get burned. I decided to hop through the woods and explore, hoping I wouldn't accidentally set anything on fire with my burning bunny body. At least I know I'll never get cold. I wanted to stay optimistic, but it got a lot harder when a big, scary bug came crawling out of the forest behind me. It was a Mermex soldier. Halt. By order of Her Majesty, the Mermex Queen. What is your business here? Don't worry, sir. I, I was just looking around. I spawned nearby. I can just leave if you want. Not so fast. We've been told to keep a lookout for suspicious rabbits. And you're both suspicious and a rabbit. Come with me. But what if I don't want to come with you? Then I'll just have to take you by force. I didn't like the idea of being taken by force, so I turned and hopped away as quickly as I could. I may have not had any weapons, but at least I was extremely fast. I'm just a baby fire rabbit for now, with only 10 hearts, but if I can get away from these creepy crawlies, I'll be able to get bigger and stronger. But my little self pep talk was interrupted by another Mermex soldier popping out from behind a tree and stopping me in my tracks. Don't you know it's rabbit season, silly bunny? Us Mermex soldiers are everywhere in the Seco woods. You better come with me, or someone, somewhere, is going to enjoy a bowl of rabbit soup tonight. That was clearly a threat, so I decided to play along and follow him so I could save my fire rabbit skin. On day two, the Mermex soldier pushed me all the way to a weird, bee-like looking hive base on the edge of the woods. Not the kind of place where I'd typically like to spend my day. What is this place? This is the hive, you misbehaving little rabbit. This is where me and my fellow Mermexes live with our wonderful queen. She's currently in a different biome on royal business, but when she returns, she'll question you personally. How long will that take, though? It will take as long as it takes. Do not question the judgment of our beloved queen. He didn't talk to me much after that. I was taken to some kind of holding cell in the hive and pushed inside to wait for the return of the queen. But she could be gone for weeks. I don't want to be trapped in here for all that time. You're telling me. I turned and saw a pink pixie fluttering around the cell looking bored. I'm Paris, the Pink Pixie. I feel like I've been trapped in here forever. I was just flying through the Seco Woods, minding my own business, when those Mermex goons grabbed me and dragged me in here for being suspicious. Sorry for making assumptions here, but can't you use your Pink Pixie magic to get us out of here? Nope, these walls are magic proof. Hmm, but are they fireproof? I walked closer to the wooden fence gates until they caught fire and the block started breaking. Soon enough, we were free. As we escaped, a Mermex soldier almost caught us, but we managed to get out of there. Thank you for freeing me, Zozo. I'm going to go see my family. They're probably worried about me, but I hope we meet again someday. I hope that too, Paris. Safe travels. Paris left and I decided to get out of the Sika Woods before more Mermexes were sent after me. On day three, I found my way into the meadow, where I figured that no Mermex soldier could ever find me. Man, escaping that hive was hungry work, though. I wonder if there's some food around here that's perfect for a little fire rabbit like me. Not long after, I found a patch of carrots. Perfect! I dug them up and ate them, feeling my hunger bar replenish. It made me feel a whole lot better. Until another, bigger rabbit hopped over to me, and he didn't seem pleased. Hey, those are my carrots you just ate. They were prized, award-winning, and you just ate them without even asking me. Do you have any idea how messed up that is? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I didn't know they were yours. I would never would have eaten them if I did. You think that makes me feel better? I'm still down a bunch of carrots. We rabbits should stick together, not steal from each other. Is there any way I could make it up to you in the name of rabbit solidarity? Hmm, well, there are a few favors you could do for me. Follow me. I'll figure out a way for you to pay off your debts. Thank you so much for your forgiveness. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm KR. Let's go. And I followed KR, eager to get back into his good graces. From day four to day five, KR escorted me back to his base in the meadow. He must have been pretty brave to live out here in the middle of nowhere. This is my place. Don't tell anyone about this place under any circumstances. Why? Because I like my privacy. Don't ask too many questions. It's not a likable quality. Inside the base, he explained to me exactly how I could repay him for eating his special carrots. As you know, the world is hard for little rabbits like us. People think they can pick on us, look down on us, and I've seen too much of that throughout my life. 
I've kept a list of the kind of people who have made my life harder over the years. Rabbit haters, you know. Help me get through my list, and not only will you be happier, you'll have repaid your debt. That sounds like something I could do. Where should I start, KR? You can start by getting out of here and making your own base. It'd be dangerous for us to be seen together. Take this stone sword and stone pickaxe and make something of yourself before you come back to me. You gave me the tools and I got out of there. The meadow gave me the creeps, so I decided I'd set up my base in the ebony woods instead. I used the pickaxe to mine some stone. I made myself an axe and cut down some trees for wood. I found a nice clearing in the forest and built myself a basic base where I could at least sleep with a roof over my head for the night. But when I was done building, I got my first unwelcome visitor, one of the Mermex soldiers who had captured me earlier. There you are! I knew you were the killer rabbit, and now I'm gonna put you down. Killer rabbit? What? That's not me! I'm not gonna listen to your lies! Time to battle you, bad bunny! He seemed strong, and as I was, I felt like I couldn't beat him. I summoned up my strength and leveled up. I got bigger, stronger. I now had 20 hearts and a new ability, the fireball attack. And with one blast of that fireball, the Mermex soldier was gone. I really am living up to the fire rabbit name. From day six to day eight, I was exploring the ebony woods a little further. It was a strange and magical place, made even more magical by a sudden reappearance, Paris the Pink Pixie. I immediately hopped over to meet her. Hey, Paris, is everything okay? I wish I could say it was, Zozo, but no, something terrible happened. I went to see my family, but they were all gone and their home was destroyed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, Paris, that's terrible. Do you want to stay at my base? I can help you in your time of need. Thank you, Zozo, but right now, I need to be alone. We'll speak again soon. Be safe out there. Paris the Pink Pixie left. I felt terrible for her and started to wonder if maybe the ones who destroyed Paris's family were the same ones that KR warned me about. Maybe it was time to begin my quest. I returned to KR's base in the meadow and asked him what I should do first to complete my mission. Your first target is the hairy troll further into the meadow. He's a violent, dangerous individual, so you should take him out with extreme prejudice. Do you think he could have been behind the destruction of the Pink Pixie family? What? How do you know about that? I know the survivor. Hmm, there's a strong possibility. But don't ask him about it when you meet him. Just destroy him. He'll try to deceive you. From day 9 to day 10, I followed KR's instructions and went further out into the meadow. Wow, this is fast and empty. But I pressed on. I needed to avenge Paris and repay my carrot debt to KR. There was no backing out now. Suddenly, the hairy troll jumped out and ambushed me, ready to attack. I knew he'd send someone after me. Of course he'd be too cowardly to go after me himself. Pathetic. Cowardly? No, what's cowardly is destroying a whole family of pink pixies rather than picking on someone your own size. I'm just doing a favor for a friend. You have terrible taste in friends. I've never hurt any pink pixies. He told me you'd lie. Let's battle. The hairy troll was a tough enemy, but with my sword and fireballs, I was able to defeat him in the end. Shortly after his defeat, a wolf woman came out of the forest. Wow, you really fried that troll. I had no idea anyone could do those awesome fire tricks. Thanks, I don't like hurting people, but I needed to stop him from ever hurting anyone, like he hurt the Pink Pixie family. Oh, the Pink Pixie family. I heard about that. It was terrible. But I don't think a troll was behind that. It was some kind of other creature. So the attacker is still at large? Oh no, I need to speak to KR about this. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to KR's base, telling him that I'd defeated the hairy troll, but that the one who'd attacked the Pink Pixie family was still out there somewhere. If the hairy troll wasn't behind it, then it must be the Thorn Wolf. A truly dangerous and evil creature that lives deep in the ebony woods. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the Thorn Wolf was behind the Pink Pixie family attack. Thorn Wolf? Even the name sounds scary. It's definitely a scary creature. I recommend getting better weapons and tools before you go to destroy it. Otherwise, you may find yourself at a disadvantage. Good idea, KR. I'll get right on it. I found my way to a cave in the meadow and explored until I found some iron ore veins inside. I used some of my spare stone to make a furnace, then mined the iron ore and smelted it into ingots. 
Now time to do some crafting. I created an iron sword and an iron pickaxe, an iron chest plate, and then left the cave where I ran into a creeper spider. Oh no! Rather than engaging, I ran away as quickly as I could. The creeper spider exploded behind me, leaving a huge crater in the ground. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured further into the ebony woods than I ever had before. My little fire rabbit heart filled with fear. If the thorn wolf really was as powerful and as dangerous as KR told me, then I could be in real danger even being around here. As I was exploring, I heard a sound behind me, so I turned and saw the thorn wolf. He was right there, and I was totally surprised. I braced myself for an attack, but he didn't attack. Instead, he spoke with a kindly voice. Is everything okay, young rabbit? You seem nervous. Are, are you the thorn wolf? Oh, yes, it is my duty to patrol the ebony woods and protect the creatures there. So you're not a bad guy? Well, we always try our best, don't we? Stay safe out there, little rabbit. The thorn wolf left, and I was confused. He was nothing like KR told me. Something really wasn't right here, and I needed to speak to KR immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the meadow to find KR's base, but it was empty, and KR was nowhere to be seen. This is strange. Maybe he's just out there running some errands. I returned to my base, only to find that Paris the Pink Pixie was there waiting for me. This couldn't have been a good sign. I knew that much. What's wrong, Paris? Zozo, it's an emergency. I know who destroyed my family. Who? It was a creature they call the Killer Rabbit. It's one of the most dangerous things in the overworld. Killer Rabbit? K... R... Oh no! And just like that, it all came together. K... R was the Killer Rabbit, and he was behind everything. That meant I needed to get back to the Thorn Wolf as quickly as possible. He was in terrible danger. And I was right, and I didn't realize it soon enough. When I was there, Thorn Wolf was already gone, and only the Killer Rabbit remained. I wondered how long it'd take you to figure it out. Oh well, you are at least a good tool for a while, even if you're useless to me now. I don't get it. Why were you using me like that? I needed a Thaw Rabbit, someone to take the heat for me. And who's better at taking heat than a Fire Rabbit? Besides, you really did eat my carrots, and I couldn't let that fly. Could I? You may have used me, Killer Rabbit, but now I'm gonna take you down. I fired a fireball at him, and it seemingly had no effect. And when he hit me, it was like being hit by a train. Everything went dark, and I was gone. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up, and the Killer Rabbit was gone. Instead, a mysterious figure was standing next to me, a large hippogriff. Do you work for or with the Killer Rabbit? Answer quickly. No, I only ever worked with him when he was tricking me. Now I know who he truly is. I'm 100% against him. Good, then we have a common enemy. I am Laharl the Hippogriff, and I was a friend of the Thorn Wolf. We were defenders of the people, guardians of the forest. But now he's gone, and only I remain. You're not alone. I want to be better. I'm Zozo. Let me become a guardian of the forest too. We're going to defeat the Killer Rabbit together. Come to my base with me, and we'll start to plan. Agreed. We will defeat that monstrous creature and keep the people of the forest safe forevermore. I went into the forest with Laharl, and we gathered enough stone and wood to construct a new house for him to stay in. Together, we'd be stronger than we'd ever been before. From day 23 to day 26, I was hopping back through the Sika woods where I first spawned when I saw the pink glow of Paris the Pixie. Predictably, Paris the Pixie was in peril perpetuated by a pestering pursuer. <laughs> excuse me, so much alliteration. Zozo, is that you? Help, this wind serpent is trying to blow me away. The wind serpent did indeed look fierce, but even a gust of wind will only fan the flames of this fire rabbit. I hopped forward and hit the wind serpent with a fireball. The slithering mob stopped chasing Paris and started to fly towards me. We battled it out in melee and I was able to bring it down with my sword. Somehow I knew I could count on you, Zozo. I'm just glad you still trust me. I attacked all the wrong people because of KR and I let that menace run free all the while. That killer rabbit gives our kind a bad name. You weren't the only one fooled by his goody good act. Don't worry, Zozo. I know that you're out here trying to do the right thing. Doing the best that I can, and I'll work with anyone else who is willing to help me take that lion killer down. Count me in. My family got hurt because of his wicked ways. He won't be getting away with that. Thanks, Paris.
From day 27 to day 31, I found a flock of sheep wandering through the woods. They looked really tired, like they had been walking for several days. I hopped over to see what was going on and soon found out what had happened. These sheep were friends of the thorn wolf from the ebony woods, and since he was gone, they'd been looking for a new protector to save them from the killer rabbit. You'll be safe at my base, sheep. Not only is it back where you used to live, but I'll be your protector now. When I got back to my base in the ebony woods, I helped the sheep settle in and then went to go see how Laharl was holding up. Welcome back, Zozo. I made the base cooler by adding some rat banners. Wow, awesome work, Laharl. All the buildings at the base now had awesome rabbit banners on them, which suited me just fine. Meanwhile, over at the real killer rabbit's base, not the pretend base over in the meadow, he was now in the process of maniacally planning his next wicked plot from his evil lair. Now, there may be a few people around who know that I'm the killer rabbit, but I think we can arrange some accidents for those individuals. What say you, my fine warden dragon friend? If there's anyone who is good at causing accidents, it's me. They might as well call me Daisy. First name, Oopsie. Full name, Oopsie Daisy. You just had an accident of the you're not gonna be around anymore kind. We're really gonna need to work on your threatening lines there, Oopsie. It's difficult. My evil boss is a rabbit. I mean, sorry, boss. You better wise up. I'm not just any rabbit. I'm a killer rabbit. From day 32 to day 35, I remembered that one of the Mermex soldiers that I had encountered said that they had been looking for suspicious rabbits. So I made the choice to go and seek out the hive of the Mermex queen. I might be a rabbit, but I know what suspicious one they might be looking for. If I tell them who the killer rabbit is, maybe all the other rabbits will stop being captured like I was. I made it to the hive and found that it was guarded by Mermex soldiers. I guess I should have expected that. Halt and stay halted. I'm not halting. I'm here to see the queen. Like we'd fall for that one, rabbit. The Mermex soldier tried to fight me, but I dodged his attacks. I didn't want to hurt anybody while I was trying to make an alliance, so I shot a fireball away from them to let them know who I was. Look, I'm not the rabbit you're looking for. I've got fire powers. Fire powers? But that means you're the one who broke out of the cell. That is true, but only because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. I know which rabbit really did the crimes, so he should be the one who does the time. Okay, we still have questions, but that rhyme convinced us to take you to the queen. Yes, don't be mean. Let me see the queen. You can stop rhyming now. The Mermex soldiers let me inside of the hive so that I could have my important meeting with the Mermex queen. Naturally, the room where I was able to speak with the queen was her own throne room. I am the Mermex queen. What is your request to my majesty, small rabbit? It concerns the fate of all the land, your Mermex queenliness. I know who the killer rabbit is. You do? Oh, at long last, that monster has been found. How do you know about him? He went by the name K.R., and now he's on a new spree of attacks on innocent creatures all throughout the biomes. He always was like that, even in my mother's time. She was the Mermex Queen before me, and when the creatures of the woods started being attacked, she suspected everyone but the innocent-looking rabbit. It was her mistake, because the killer rabbit claimed her as another one of his victims. I had to take over the throne, just as my mother's killer went into hiding. I've been hunting him down ever since. It's such a sad story. I promise to help you bring the killer rabbit to justice with all the fire in my heart. There is more, but it's far too painful to talk about. You should go home for now. I will send a soldier to visit once I've emotionally prepared myself. From day 36 to day 39, I got ready to take my armor up a notch in defense by preparing to go back into the cave for some more iron ore. The killer rabbit was a lot older and more experienced than me, so I had to be all the more prepared for our eventual showdown. I soon found a spot in the cave where iron was abundant and mined away, adding the iron ore to my inventory. Next, I got out my crafting table and smelted the iron ore into the iron ingots I would need to craft the rest of my armor. That should do it. All right, time to become an iron fire rabbit. I made myself an iron axe since I had been gathering so much wood lately, and an iron helmet, iron leggings, and a pair of iron boots to complete my full set of iron armor. You can't see it on my fur, but believe me, it's there. Now equipped with all this brand new iron gear, I ventured deeper in the cave and found that beneath the iron, there were a few diamonds to be mined. I made sure to get them before I left. Later on, I was back above ground when I got an unexpected visitor. He was half rabbit and half wolf, a rabbit wolf. Hi there. Bet you never met nobody like me before. Hey, you're right. Anyway, the Mermex Queen said I could leave the dungeon cell at the half if I went and brought you back to her. 
Let me guess, her soldiers locked you up because you were a suspicious rabbit? Well, yeah, I mean, look at me. I'm such a suspicious rabbit, it's hard to know if I'm even a rabbit. Anyway, you should go meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. From day 40 to day 43, I went to meet the Mermex Queen over in the Ebony Woods. Your queenliness, I am excited to work together and solve these crimes. I knew the Rabbit Wolf wouldn't fail to bring you here. If you ever see him again, make sure to thank him for me. I certainly will. So, are you ready to tell me more about the Killer Rabbit and his previous rampage? Yes, it's time you knew everything about what happened with him. Even though we had met in a secret location and were trying to keep our conversation quiet, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon had super powerful hearing and was able to pick up on our voices from another part of the woods. Oopsie Daisy, time for an accident to happen, on purpose. He barged into the clearing and fired a sonic laser blast at me, which did many hearts of damage. Hey, what's the big idea? Nothing. I just happened to be totally unintentionally getting rid of two people who know who the killer rabbit is by accident. Haha, -ha, now I know who you work for. You just said it was the killer rabbit. Ah, uh, darn it. I actually didn't mean to do that. Oh well, I'll just make you disappear. Then nobody will know. He fired another sonic blast my way, which I almost avoided. I countered with a fireball that didn't seem to do much. I looked around for the Mermex Queen and saw that she had escaped while I had been talking to the Warden Dragon. Yeah, I should probably do the same thing. I ran off into the woods, trying to go a different direction so that the Warden Dragon wouldn't know who to follow. From day 44 to day 49, I had gotten away from the Warden Dragon and safely arrived back at my base. I never expected the Mermex Queen to be there as well, waiting to continue our conversation from where we left off. I was happy to see that she was okay and could fend for herself, even without her soldiers. I guess the killer rabbit knows we both know about him. That's why he sent that warden dragon to destroy us. Perhaps he needs to rely on his henchmen now because he isn't as strong as he used to be. You mean that he used to be stronger? He totally demolished me the last time we fought. Well, he still is the killer rabbit, but he used to carry around a secret rare battle axe that made it really easy for him to make anyone he wanted disappear forever. He was a killer rabbit with a killer battle axe? That's so scary. How did you stop him? I didn't. A mysterious mob known as a Crimson Phantom laid a curse upon the battle axe so that the killer rabbit could never use it again. I know. Maybe if we find this battle axe, we could use it against him. Didn't stop the killer rabbit from being evil, but it did weaken him. Then I'm off to the meadow. That's good thinking, Zozo. I heard that the battle axe was crafted deep down in the depths of the meadow. You can find some clues about it there. From day 50 to day 53, I delved all the way to the end of the meadow in order to find out more information about who crafted the battle axe that the killer rabbit used in his previous reign of terror. After a lot of searching, I came across an abandoned workshop that looked like it was once used for smithing weapons. This must be the place, I reckon. I found a book near the crafting table that was titled Axe Maker's Notes and opened it up to read the words inside. I have made a lot of axes out of a lot of different materials in my day, and boy do I love doing it. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. In fact, it's the only thing I do. I'm the axe maker after all. But this latest axe, it's not like the other ones. It's got an evil aura around it, like it's too sharp and too scary just to be used on trees. This axe seems like it could kill someone. It's a killer axe. I better get rid of it before someone uses it for evil. Oh, wait, what's that? Someone is coming. The sentence in the book ended there, and the rest of the pages were blank. Oh no, the killer rabbit must have snuck up behind the axe maker and gotten rid of him so he could steal the killer axe. What a fiend! Still, from what I'd read, the battle axe was a powerful weapon. It must be able to hurt the killer rabbit if he was willing to do so much to get it. I looked around for more clues, but couldn't find any, so I gave up and started to head back to my base. From day 54 to day 57, I was making my way through the meadow when I happened to pass by the area where I had found those carrots before. Didn't the killer rabbit say that those carrots were his? If I know rabbits, and I probably do because I am one, then that could mean that the killer rabbit's base might be around here too. I was excited that I had discovered a clue, but that excitement was quickly lost when the warden dragon showed up to blast me with a sonic laser attack. Whoops, pardon me. That time I was trying to get rid of you, and I accidentally didn't do enough damage. You did enough, actually. You don't have to do any more damage. No, I think I do. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do all the damage to you. 
As much as I wanted to, I was still not strong enough to take down the Warden Dragon, so I made my escape as quickly as I could. Even though I didn't find it, I was right about the Killer Rabbit's base being nearby. The horrible hare was there right now, scheming up a storm. Soon, yes, very soon, I will find a way to reverse the curse and take back my battle axe. All of them will pay then. From day 58 to day 62, I had made it back to the base and saw that Laharl had created a storage room for all of our weapons. Great work, Laharl. Thanks. I just figured since you were talking about a rare secret killer battle axe, I should make some room for it. One thing led to another, and now there's a whole room full of every other weapon we had. There seems to be a lot of empty spaces. I guess I'll have to make us some more. We could definitely use some diamond ones, since we don't have any yet. Good point. I'll see if there are any more diamonds down in the mine. I went down to the mines, and it was just my luck. There were some more diamonds right in the same cavern where I'd found the previous ones. I dug all around so that I could have enough for a diamond weapon to put in the weapon storage room. Once the diamonds were gathered, I chose to craft two diamond swords, one for myself and one for storage. I also crafted a diamond chest plate and a diamond pickaxe because diamonds make everything better. From day 63 to day 66, Laharl and I were hanging out in the base when our conversation suddenly turned serious. When are we gonna do something about that killer rabbit, Zozo? He's starting to become a real problem for everyone. I know, Laharl, but I can't even defeat the clumsy warden dragon he sent to make me disappear, much less the killer rabbit himself. But if you had that secret rare killer battle axe, you might stand a chance. But that's the trouble. I don't have that secret rare killer battle axe. Not yet you don't, but I think I might know where it is. Take me to it then. Don't you know how serious I am about wanting to stop the killer rabbit? Laharl listened to how serious I was and took me to the eroded badlands where we found some cursed ruins. We walked up to them until we hit an invisible barrier. How did these ruins get so cursed? A long time ago, the Crimson Phantom put a curse on these ruins that won't let anyone else enter. The Crimson Phantom? Isn't that the same creature that cursed the battle axe? Yes, but it looks like we need to get him to lift the curse before we can check to see if the battle axe is here. From day 67 to day 70, the Mermex Queen came into the base and told me that she had also been searching for the Crimson Phantom. He's been sighted in the Ebony Woods, but my gods weren't able to capture him. He's even taken a few down. I didn't realize this Crimson Phantom was such a dangerous creature. He sure is. I could really use your help bringing the Crimson Phantom in. Then let's do it. You can count on me, your queenliness. He left my base and went through the woods to find the Crimson Phantom flying away after having just defeated one of the Mermex soldiers. You'll never take me alive. I'm the dang old Crimson Phantom, you bunch of goofballs. Knock it off, Crimson Phantom. We need your help. Nah, who needs my help? He attacked, so I had to blast him with fire. The Crimson Phantom was definitely strong based on the way he tanked my attack. So I whacked him a few times with my diamond sword. Please, don't fight. We just want to stop the killer rabbit, and we know that you do too. You put a curse on his battle axe so he couldn't hurt people with it. So what if I did? It was probably the nicest thing I ever did for anyone. It doesn't have to be if you help us again. Please, Crimson Phantom. Ah, shucks. How can I say no to an innocent rabbit? And just like that, I convinced the Crimson Phantom to help us retrieve the secret rare killer battle axe so we could defeat the killer rabbit. From day 71 to day 74, that pesky accident-prone warden dragon showed up at my base to try to get rid of me again. Come on out and face me, Zozo. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> it will. I hadn't gotten any stronger since we fought before, but my weapons and armor were a bit more durable, so I hopped out and decided to take them on. Take this, Daisy! Fireball! I circled around the Warden Dragon, shooting fireballs and trying to avoid a sonic blast. But I wasn't fast enough, and my armor couldn't protect me. I took many hearts of damage. I got down to just half a heart. Oh no, is this how I'm gonna go out? Apparently not, because instead of doing you in, I'm accidentally going to steal your best friend, the Harl, and completely not on purpose, hold him hostage somewhere. You monster! Why? I don't know. I'm not sure why I do anything anymore, but I am evil. The Warden Dragon dragged Laharl away, and there was nothing I could do about it because I was too weak. I can't do this! I'm just a rabbit! I went to the room to mope about it and close myself away from everyone else. I couldn't let them see me after such an embarrassing defeat. That was until the Crimson Phantom arrived. Hey there, Zozo. Don't blame yourself for what happened. You'll get Laharl back. You really think so, Crimson Phantom? 
Of course I do. And once you do, you won't have to worry, because I've given your base some sweet defenses. He wasn't kidding. The Crimson Phantom had made a wall around the base, which had a curse on it so it wouldn't allow any of my enemies to pass through. From day 75 to day 78, I learned more about the perimeter wall, like how it would only let people that I trusted into the base. The Mermex Queen was definitely someone I knew I could trust. The perimeter wall let her right through. Greetings, your queenliness. Zozo, there is one more thing I didn't tell you about the Killer Rabbit, but I'm going to tell you what that is now. What is it, Mermex Queen? Your friend, Laharl, he kept this secret from you because he wanted to protect you. The truth is that the curses of the Crimson Phantom can be reversed by the feathers of a live hippogriff. You mean that now the Killer Rabbit can... Reverse the curse and reclaim his ultimate weapon, yes! You must go and rescue Laharl before the Killer Rabbit extracts his feathers. I will! I think I know now where in the meadow his base is! The Mermex Queen gave me some javelins to serve as a ranged weapon and wished me luck as I departed! From day 79 to day 84, I searched for the Killer Rabbit's base in the meadow. I knew that it had to be somewhere around where I had found that fateful carrot patch. Sure enough, Oopsie Daisy the Warden Dragon was wandering around in plain view of that area. He had taken Laharl captive earlier, and now he was going to tell me where he was. Hey you, give me back my friend. Oops, you aren't supposed to find me. Well now I have, and I'm gonna scorch you. I rained fireballs and javelins down on him from a distance, but it still wasn't enough. And his sonic blast still hurt quite a bit. Uh -oh. What was I worried about? <laughs> it's not like you could defeat me even if I accidentally let you. I was beginning to think I was done for, and then Laharl swooped down from above and attacked the Warden Dragon while his sonic blasts were focused on me. Oh no, I should have seen that coming, but I accidentally did not. Laharl's attacks did enough damage to bring the Warden Dragon down and defeat him for good. After the Warden Dragon was defeated, I approached Laharl. Laharl, you're free! I sure am, Zozo. That Warden Dragon accidentally let me go before we even got to the lair of the Killer Rabbit. I've just been down here in the meadow, trying not to get caught again. At any rate, I'm glad you managed to get away. I was worried about you. I found something else while I was down here. A golden apple that is said to imbue the one who eats it with true strength as long as they are pure of heart. It's yours now, Zozo. Gee, thanks! I'm starving! I ate the golden apple and could feel myself transform. I must have been pure of heart because I grew into a supersized fire rabbit and had a grand total of 60 hearts. My jump was given a big boost too, allowing me to reach higher heights than ever before. From day 85 to day 89, Laharl and I went back to the base where things were once again becoming super ultra serious all of a sudden. Zozo, it is time. I'm gonna take you back to the eroded badlands so we can get that battle axe. But how are we going to bypass the curse? Oh wait, aren't your feathers the way to do it? Yes, my feathers can make a magic key that will let you get through. I held off on telling you until I was sure that you were pure of heart. But now that I know you are, and that you won't become another killer rabbit once you get the battle axe, I can give you the key. Laharl gave me a bunch of his hippogriff feathers, and I crafted them into a key. Use the key at the ruin. It'll be like I am with you. I did as my good friend Laharl said, and traveled back to the cursed ruins in the eroded badlands. With the magic key, I was able to bypass the curse and enter the ruins. Inside, I found the battle axe, lying in wait for me to claim it. I'm gonna put the magic key that Laharl made away. It'd be pretty silly if I accidentally reversed the curse and made it so that the killer rabbit could use the killer axe. After I had safely stowed the key, I took the secret rare battle axe from its place and left the ruins. From day 90 to day 94, I stepped out of the ruins and found the killer rabbit standing out there to confront me in the eroded badlands. How do you do, fellow rabbit? It's over, KR. I have the battle axe now and you'll never break the curse on it. That's the thing about you, Zozo. You always think you understand everything. That's why it's so easy to trick you. Nuh-uh. This time I do understand everything. I understand that you are a ruthless monster who must be stopped before he hurts anyone else. But think of what we could accomplish if you joined me. Nobody would disrespect us bunnies anymore. We would be the top of the woods. I'll never join you, killer rabbit. Suit yourself. By the way, I accidentally picked up some feathers that your hippogriff friend Laharl dropped down in the meadow. That's not good. The killer rabbit leaped forth and wrestled with me for the axe. I was a strong rabbit, but he was still stronger. And before I could stop him, he reversed the curse on the axe and took it back. 
No, you tricked me. I thought I understood, but I didn't. You're too naive. Now wallow here in this sand pit. He jumped on the sand I was sitting on, and the impact of his landing made the sand collapse, so I fell into a deep hole. From day 95 to day 97, I used my boosted jumps to slowly but surely make my way back up to the surface of the eroded badlands. There was no time to lose. Now that the killer rabbit had the super secret rare killer battle axe, he was going to go on his biggest spree of attacks yet. And I know who he's gonna go after first. I rushed back to the Sika woods and entered the hive of the Mermex Queen. Her soldiers were destroyed, and that wasn't even the worst part. In her throne room, the Mermex Queen was dying after having just been attacked by the killer rabbit and his killer axe. No, your queenliness! Sozo, so you made it. I'm so sorry. I tried to stop him, but he tricked me once again. And now he's wiped out your entire hive. Do not worry. As long as there is a Mermex Queen, the hive will be able to replenish itself. What you must do now is get the battle axe away from him at all costs. I'll do it. Even if I have to risk everything, I will do it. In a few days, my final egg will hatch and become the new queen. You need to protect her for me. I will. I will, your queenliness. She passed on, leaving me behind in the world that I must save. On day 98, I returned to my base in the Ebony Woods and found that the perimeter wall and the rest of the base was destroyed. Laharl was there, but nobody else had survived the attack. He came for the Crimson Phantom Sozo to make sure that he was never cursed again. Now the battle axe is his forever. Don't say that, Laharl. I know that you and I get serious sometimes, but we always keep on trying to make things better. The only reason he left me alive is in case anyone else cursed the axe so that I could reverse it. So that killer rabbit only spared you for his own reasons. That makes me so mad. He'll probably fool you again if you give in to your emotions. Well, my emotions are pure right now. And every spark of fire in my being demands justice! Then what the heck? Go get that battle axe! You're strong enough now. I can feel it! Laharl cheered me on as I marched off through the woods! On day 99, I arrived in the meadow with a burning passion in my heart. I was ready to take down that killer rabbit with all my strength and all of my fire! Once I was inside his base, I came face to face with my nemesis once more. You never learn, do you, Zozo? Like fire, you think you're bright, but when it rains, you go out. The only rain I see now is your reign of terror, and it ends here. A clever use of two words that sound alike, but you've forgotten already that I have the killer axe. Actually, it is you who has forgotten. That battle axe was accidentally forged to be evil, but it was touched by a hero who was pure of heart. I jumped at him, and once more, we wrestled with the axe. This time, I managed to get it away from him and ran out of his base. The secret to the battle axe that I was finally able to understand was that it was cursed twice. Once I was back home, I used some more of Laharl's feathers I found in his base to undo the first curse that happened when it was made, turning it into a weapon of pure goodness and justice. Now, no evildoer could ever wield it. Only I could wield the battle axe. On day 100, I returned to the meadow with the new and improved Super Justified Hero Axe and faced off against the Killer Rabbit. Why did you come back? I might have let you live for a while. I had to. There is a whole world out there that needs to be protected from rotten rabbits like you. There is a young Mermex Queen who will hatch today. There is a Hippogriff who is my best friend. For them, for everyone, my fires of good will burn out your evil. The killer rabbit hopped at me, but with the battle axe in my hand, my attacks were strong enough to take his hearts away. Curse you, Zozo! Haven't you got it yet? I can't be cursed. I blasted him with fireball after fireball, and then swung the battle axe down on him, ending the fight. There is a new rabbit in this land, and he's a protector rabbit.